Chapter 233-235 Later Velophis went home, don't ask me how, Veldora immediately left to explore, wreak havoc, across the city of Rumuru, I went to join both Ilya and Makoto while other Rumuru, that damn workaholic, went back to work. I will never understand that man and his love for needless work. Just make a clone. It's that easy. Actually, he's the type to make a clone, send it to work, and when it complains about work, he would send it on a vacation and do the work himself in the end. Well, I don't need to think about it. He's a slime and he has, Raphael, so it'll be fine. I'm bored now. Author. Time skip. Alric, wait what? I open my eyes to find myself in a bed. The morning sun is shining through the curtains covering the window of what seems to be a guest room. I look down at my naked form before my gaze turns towards Makoto's similarly naked form. Suddenly, regret fills my body and soul. God damn it author, you time skipped too far. Mikoto, MNN. Mikoto starts showing signs of waking up. Her eyes flutter open, revealing her eyes that slightly glow as bluish-white electricity dances within. I will never grow tired of watching those eyes. She looks at me. I look at her. I narrow my eyes. Rimuru. Fuck it. I pounce on her. Mikoto, ah. Rimuru. Wait. We did it all night last night. Rimuru, I don't care. Blame author for making me miss it. Mikoto, wait, it's the author's fault. On. I stopped time with, Azathoth, so I could enjoy her for a little longer. A few hours later in stop time, I finally had my fill and resumed time again. Rimuru, I've had enough. I'm satisfied. Mikoto, is that a motherfucking Jojo reference? Those were Makoto's last words before she fell into unconsciousness with semen pouring out of her two lower holes. Yes, too. I used both of them. I cleaned her up and tucked her in before kissing her forehead and leaving for other Rimura's office again. I'm probably only going to stay here for today before going back to my world, maybe tomorrow too. So I might as well have a little more fun. Bang. I kick open the door again. Rimuru, heya. Other Rimuru, oh hi Mark. Other Rimuru looks up from the papers in front of him. He's currently in his human form. Surprisingly, Cheyenne is standing there next to him, probably doing, secretary, stuff. I ignore the slash marks on the walls that weren't there yesterday. Rimuru, hello Cheyenne. Anyway, other Rimuru, what are you going to do with Shizue's students and their imminent deaths? Other Rimuru, stop calling me uh, wait, Shizu's students are going to die. Shizue told Rimuru about having students and even being a teacher at Freedom Academy before she died. Other Rimuru knows that she first had two students, Hinata and Yuki, before taking up a teaching position a few years later and teaching a group of five kids. But other than that, not much else. So I sat down and explained about the S-class kids and their magical overload condition. Rimuru and since they have no outlet for such a mass of magicules due to their young age, they will eventually burn up and die. Other Rimuru. Other Rimuru just sat in his seat, staring up at the ceiling with a stunned expression. Cheyenne left the room a while ago as she realized this was a serious talk between Other Rimuru and me. Seeing as she was really courteous about it and I felt a little sorry, I gave her a meat bun that may or may not give her the, cook, unique skill. Teehee. Other Rimuru looks down from the ceiling into my eyes and asks me a question with a serious, almost pleading voice. Other Rimuru, they can be saved, right? The thought that I might be lying about this never even crosses his mind. Shizu is important to both of us, and he knows that I wouldn't joke about something like this. Rimuru, of course. I solved it by fusing them with greater spirits. Of course, attracting a greater spirit isn't easy, so I just ate a bunch of lesser spirits and mashed them together into an artificial spirit. Problem solved. I say with a casual shrug of my shoulders. Other Rimuru leans back in his seat after releasing a sigh of relief. Other Rimuru, that's good, as long as there's a chance, unless they're set to die very soon. Rimuru, nah, they've still got at least a couple of years. You're golden. Other Rimuru, okay, that's good, that's good. A relieved smile spreads on his lips and he closes his eyes. He's probably talking to, Raphael, about what he should do. Should he leave now, or should he stay and look for more information on spirits? Rimuru, asterisk ahem asterisk now, I have a little request for you. I nervously shift in my seat. I'm not sure if he'll accept after all. Other Rimuru, hmm. 
What's up? Rimuru, ugh. Can you let me deal with them? I say while pointing towards myself. Other Rimuru. Rimuru, gulp. Other Rimuru's golden eyes bore down on me. Please, I'm begging you. Don't ask. His eyes narrow. Other Rimuru. What were you planning to do to them? Shit. He asked. Rimuru. Other Rimuru. Rimuru. Well. Other Rimuru. Rimuru. You ever heard of this game called Warframe? There are some similarities in the entertainment of my Earth and Satoru Mikami's Earth, at least from my memories. For example, they both have Dragon Ball and Naruto. But Satoru's Earth doesn't have One Piece. They also both have Warframe. Other Rimuru's eyes widen in the realization of what I'm planning to do. Raphael is probably filling him in on the theorized details that will most likely be completely correct. Damn you, Raphael. Other Rimuru. No. Rimuru, okay, so Warframe is this game where dash. Other Rimuru, I know about the game. I'm saying, no, you will not be giving kids who haven't even hit their teenager years overpowered weapons of war, dot. Rimuru, oh come on. It'll be amazing. They are young children with uncontrolled power. It's exactly the same as the Tenno in the game. That power can be channeled into the Warframes, giving them a power boost and also solving their rampaging energy problems. Other Rimuru, still no. Rimuru, giving them spirits will make them powerhouses anyway. Might as well give them something unique. Other Rimuru, nope. Rimuru, please. I use Ilya's puppy eyes technique. Other Rimuru turns around and hurls. Bruh. In the end, I managed to convince other Rimuru to let me go ahead with my admittedly idiotic plan. I mean, he did have a point when he called me crazy for giving children weapons of war. His specific words were, you crazy bitch, the fuck is wrong with your head to even think about going through with this, but then he said, and what the fuck is wrong with my head for actually considering this? I'm corrupting him. Slowly. An interesting thing happened when I noticed other Rimuru's corruption. This world is slowly drifting from the center of the Tenshura world cluster, while a new world appeared and taken its place. It means that due to my intervention, this world officially became a parallel world and the new world took its place as the original, or, source. Quite interesting, but ultimately it doesn't really matter. I wake up, clean up both Makoto and me, give her some breakfast in bed and immediately teleport away for today's event. Rimuru, you ready? I poke my head into other Rimuru's house. Other Rimuru, in a sec. Other Rimuru, in his slime form, jumps on his luggage and eats it, storing it in his inventory. Other Rimuru, okay I'm ready. Rimuru, sweet. I'll see you there. Snap. Other Rimuru, what do you, quad a dash. A golden portal opens up underneath him. He falls into it in the middle of his sentence before it closes, cutting off his screams, as he falls into the pits of hell, cough I'm joking. I teleport over to the guest room Mikoto and I are using. I always wonder where Ilya sleeps for the night. Did she get a room somewhere else? I mean, it's understandable. Mikoto and I go at it every night without stopping, so it must be uncomfortable for my innocent little Imuto. Anyways, I find Ilya and Mikoto both in there. For some reason, Ilya was getting out of the closet. Her head slowly turns to me, her wide eyes are staring at me like I just caught her with her proverbial hand in the cookie jar. She has a, why are you back so early, look. Mikoto just sighs. How long was Ilya in there for? Why was she in the closet? Unless, no, no, impossible. There's no way my innocent little sister would. Rimuru, right, anyway, I'm going to Ingracia with other Rimuru, I don't know how long I'll be there. Maybe an hour? So yeah, you girls have fun. See ya. I then drop through a portal that I open under me to get out of that awkward situation. Other Rimuru, you're finally here. Other Rimuru says, now in his human form wearing Shizue's anti-magic mask. Due to his evolution into a true demon lord, he now looks older. When he evolved, due to Ilya's services, he was pumped with millions of souls, giving him an obscene amount of magicules. I doubt even if everyone in the world were to combine their magicule pool together, it wouldn't match up to his. And don't worry, those souls were created spontaneously by Ilya. No one died. Because his magicule capacity is so large, he can choose to appear at whatever age he wants but chooses to stay in the 16 to 18 years zone. 
I teleported both of us into a random alley inside the royal capital of Ingracia, so we walk out and start sightseeing. Well, I've already seen this before, but it's new for Rimuru. Other Rimuru, so what now? Rimuru dash, well I was thinking we should immediately head over to the academy, do what we need to do, and get out. Other Rimuru, hmm. Shouldn't we visit this Yuki guy? Isn't he also Shizue's student? Other Rimuru asks me. I look at him and ponder. Should I just tell him? Yeah, might as well. Cannon's fucked anyways. Rimuru. Ima just say it straight. Yuki isn't a good guy. In my world, he was a crazy psychopath that wanted nothing but chaos. I look at the lost expression on his face before it slowly turns to shock. Rimuru now, I'm not saying your world Yuki and mine are the same, but you should at least be wary against him until you can confirm that he's not a bad guy. This gets him to calm down. Other Rimuru, alright. Rimuru, personally, I don't want to meet that guy. I would rather just deal with the kids and get the fuck out. But I understand if you want to meet him. I'm not telling you what to do, these are just my thoughts, but if you're going through with this, I'm not joining you. Other Rimuru cocks his head while thinking about it before he talks again. Other Rimuru. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I really want to meet him. If only to find out what he's really like. I'll be sure to hide certain information though. I shrug. It doesn't matter. The current him is enough to fight against true dragons. Other Rimuru, although I think we shout meet with the kids first. I nod my head. Other Rimuru and I then waltzed into the academy under a concealment rune and located the S-class classroom. After the whole, I am your father, Darth Vader routine, we then said, we're gonna save you. Alice. What? Kenya, you walk in here, say, I am your father, and then say, we're gonna save you. Why? In fact, who are you people? Other Rimuru face palms. Other Rimuru, I knew we should have just walked in here normally. Rimuru, normally. Where's the fun in that? Other Rimuru, there is no fun, but at least it won't end in children looking at us like we're mentally disabled. Rimuru, don't we have mental problems already? Bam. Other Rimuru slams his forehead into the teacher's podium. The kids don't really trust us. To be more specific, they don't trust adults. That's to be expected. Adults were the ones who abducted them from their world, adults were the ones who later abandoned them, adults were the ones to call them failures, adults were the ones who indirectly sentenced them to an early death. There are very few people who the S-class can trust, and only one of them can only visit every now and again. That person, Yuki, also happens to be a psychopath. Shizue, the only other person they trusted, is now dead. So yeah, it'll be hard to get them to trust us. Other Rimuru doesn't have any other ideas on how to change that other than being sincere and keep trying until he gets what he wants. Don't get me wrong, it's a viable plan. It worked in the series, but honestly, it takes time that I would rather use on something else. So I use the only method I know how to earn their trust. Rimuru, I have meat buns. And thus, we instantly gained their trust. While they were gorging themselves, other Rimuru and I explained our relation with Shizue. Or rather, other Rimuru's relation with Shizue, since I haven't met this world's Shizue yet. Bringing out the anti-magic mask just sealed the deal. Rimuru, so other Rimuru and I dash. Other Rimuru, stop calling me that. Rimuru, are here to deal with your magical overload condition. Unfortunately, I'm leaving pretty soon, but other Rimuru here dash. Other Rimuru, oi. Rimuru, can stay with you guys for much longer. This got the kids excited. Ryota, are really? You are really going to save us? Rimuru, yup. I toss the rest of the half-eaten meat bun into my mouth and stand up. Rimuru, right, let's get started. Gale, already? Rimuru, yeah. As I said, I'm leaving soon. Help me set things up, my assistant. Other Rimuru, who are you calling your assistant? Other Rimuru shoots back but he also stands up from his seat and starts pushing the student desks filling the room. The kids soon finish off their meat buns and pitch in to help. Very soon, all the tables and chairs are pushed to the side of the room, leaving a wide empty space in the middle. Rimuru, so basically I will be giving you something that you can help control your rampaging energy. It will be a source for you to channel your rampaging magicules into while also being a powerful weapon for you. Chloe raises her hand. Rimuru, yes, Chloe-chan. Chloe, are you an idiot? Why are you giving children weapons? I cough and stumble backwards. 
Other Rimuru smiles smugly at me as if silently saying, I told you so. I take a few minutes to recover. Rimuru let's, just get started already. Five humanoid figures, the Warframes, appear in the middle of the classroom. A slash N, I won't bother explaining how they look, just look them up. With stone-cold fists and the titan's physique, Atlas bends rock to encrust and bulldoze through all challengers in his brawl. Champion of elemental earth, he manifests formidable ramparts, crushing boulders, and golem brethren to rampage his stomping grounds. Mag is a warframe based on magnetic force, a master manipulator of any material it can affect. With her, throwing around enemies and crushing them with their own armor is but mere child's play. Igneous as the burning sun, Ember's fiery rage engulfs her foes and scatters their cinders in the solar wind. Empress of Elemental Flame, scorch the land with her wildfires. Control her fury or fuel the heat to unleash destructive incineration, leaving charred corpses and ashes adrift in her scarlet sea. Equipped with a diverse selection of arrows, deft hands, shroud of stealth and an exalted bow, the crafty Avara infiltrates hostile territory with deception and diversion and eliminates threats with a shot from beyond. Finally, Excalibur. The most majestic of them all, he weaves through entire armies with nothing but a sword created out of pure energy, yet leaving nothing but corpses with not a scratch on him. A swordsman of the highest order. A slash n I just copy-pasted most of the descriptions of each warframe from the wiki lol. No one says a word as the kids walk forward, drawn to their respective warframe on an instinctual level. Gale obviously chooses Atlas. Alice chooses Mag, Kenya chooses Ember. Ryota chooses Ivara. And finally, Chloe chooses Excalibur. These were the ones I thought fit the best with each student taking into consideration their specialties. Gale is an Earth user, so that was an easy choice. Alice is a puppet master, so I was torn between Mag and Nyx, but I thought the former was more in tune with Alice's skill set. Kenya likes using fire, so I gave him Ember. I thought about giving him Excalibur but decided not to. Ryota was a tough one. I thought Valkyr would be a good choice since Valkyr has a sort of rage mode. Then I remember Ryota uses a bow and arrows, so I thought Ivara, a warframe specializing in the bow, would be better. So yeah. And finally, I chose Excalibur for Chloe because they both use swords. Yeah. That's the only reason. I mean, Chloe, later on, has a very wide skill set. Sure, she specializes in time, but the only time-specialized Warframe that I know of is Protea, and she's more of a gadget user. Besides, Excalibur is plenty strong, so it's fine. Rimuru, right, each of these Warframes is plenty strong, but it mostly depends on your magicule reserves. Though, at full power, it's enough to go head-to-head -head against most demon lords, so you don't have to worry. Still, no one says anything. I assume they're still odd. I mean, they do look pretty badass. I specifically made them in, what I consider to be, their best designs. Atlas, Ember, and Loki are in their prime forms, Ivara is in her deluxe Ivara Scotty skin, and Excalibur is in his Umbra form. Kenya. Why is mine a female though? I ignore him. Eventually, the kids couldn't hold themselves back anymore and touched the Warframes. Suddenly, they disappear as they were sent straight to the Shadow Realm. Cough. I mean, they were sent into a separate space bound to their Warframes. While in that space, their minds will inhabit their Warframes and they can exit and enter the space at will. Meanwhile, they will receive a sort of information package in their minds that'll tell them how to use the damn things. I also heavily implied the need to teabag any tough opponent after a win. I can just imagine Chloe in Excalibur teabagging Guy Crimson. It'll be glorious. Name, Rimuru. Race, Origin Slime. Protection. Crest of Space. Title, Highest Tier Spirit, Leader of the Monsters, Oni Chan, King of Avalon, Master of Headpats, Procrastinator King, The Nutcracker, Socially Awkward Cringe Slightly Chuyuni Slime, True Dragon Slayer, Sensei, World's Strongest, Overpowered to a Stupid Degree, Makoto's Equal, Non-Virgin. Codex, Iliasville. Ultimate Skills, Yahweh, God of Creation, Odin, God of Runes, Azathoth, God of Void, Alternative. Equipment, Yamato, Genesis.